This is Dave Allen for Match Winner Questions and today I'm going to have a look at making drop shadows in Pixelmator. And first of all let's have a look at the way we used to have to uh, make drop shadows. And uh, it's actually fairly easy but it requires a bit of uh, messing about. So we're going to do a duplicate of the layer. So now we have two layers the same. Let's select this one because it's underneath this tool up here. And what we need to do is we need to just offset that a wee bit. And then what we need to do is go to this here change the colour of it to black. Actually I've got the top one rather than the bottom one but still that doesn't matter. We can change the order of those if we wish and bring that down. So we've got a drop shadow there. Now obviously often with a drop shadow what you do want to have is you want to have it with a bit of a blur to it. So what we need to do is we need to put a filter on that. So let's go to our filters, go to blur and uh, we haven't got a blur there. <coughs> Why don't we have a blur? Well, let's go to our layer, and I think what we need to do is we need to convert into pixels. Now we can go to our filters, and we can go to blur, and choose Gaussian, and see straight away we've got a uh, nice little blurred drop shadow, and it actually works quite nicely. So that is one way of doing your drop shadow and if all else fails you can still do that. But let's get rid of our drop shadow now from this layer here and we'll delete that. Since version 2 of Pixelmator we can do it using the text settings. So first of all let's just click on that button there so we've got something already straight away and let's decide that we want to have our drop shadow down there this decides this distance we want it from the text. This one will say how much the opacity is. And this one will do the shadow blur. So that is a lot quicker and easier to do a drop shadow in Pixelmator than it was before with text. So here we are with our brush stroke. And I want to do this here, this uh, nice little line. We want that to have a drop shadow. How on earth am I going to do that? Well, for a start off, I've made a mistake by drawing that onto the background layer. And so if I do a drop shadow of this now, what we're going to have is a drop shadow which is going to work over the whole layer. So, for instance, I'll just show you this. If I go to the filter and I use the uh, Quartz Composer, and I've uh, put a Quartz Composer drop shadow in there, I'll put a link in the show notes to get this drop shadow if you haven't got it already. So there's the uh, drop shadow. We can have preview mode if we want to. We can have uh, the radius which gives us a blur. We've got the horizontal and vertical offset. So let's just uh, have the minus there, and vertical that one there. And it still looks like we have no drop shadow. So let's just go to this tool here and do that. Let's do filter. Quartz Composer and Drop Shadow. There it's happening now, look. So we've got to have the vertical offset down to the bottom, horizontal set offset down to there, and click on OK. We've got a drop shadow, but it's worked on the whole layer. What if we want to have a drop shadow just on a line like that? OK, there. So we've erased our little uh, wiggly line there. Let's just go and do another layer. And let's put the layer on top of everything else. Nice bit can move these layers around. And now let's get our colour in there. We'll use the midnight colour this time. And do our line, a little wavy line, wiggly line. And this time we're going to do the drop shadow on that. Filter, Quartz Composer, go down to the drop shadow. And immediately we've got a drop shadow and it's using the settings that I used in the previous one and let's just change that there so we've got more of a radius on there. You can even choose the colour that you want for your drop shadow so if you want a drop shadow that's got a bit of a bluey sort of thing in there we can do. Some people say you can only have a drop sh shadow that is or a shadow that is of black but sometimes the light in something will actually change the, the slight tinge of a shadow. You might get a tinge of blue in a shadow so maybe if we go down a little bit there, so that would perhaps be more like it. So we've got a little bit of blue in our dark black coloured shadow. So that has worked, that's one way of doing it. Let's click OK on there, so we've got our shadow. 
Now you will notice, of course, that you do get a little bit of a, um, a white edge around that there. I don't think that is quite right somehow. Not unless the shadow's further away from the line. So that, that drop shadow doesn't work quite as well as I think it should do. Let's have another layer. And again, we'll put that up on top of everything else, just to make sure we get it right. And we'll do another wiggly line. Now this time I'm going to do a drop shadow using the Noise Industries drop shadow. Let's see if that works out a bit better. So again, we're going to go up to the filters. And instead of Quartz Composer, we're going to Stylize. We go to Noise Industries drop shadow, which is from the FX Factory set of filters. Now that I think works a little bit better. You can see we've got uh, no sort of uh, white edge around it. I know that it doesn't show the shadow perhaps quite as well as having those white little edge on that there, but uh, I think it probably works better. It looks like it should do. So in this NI drop shadow, we can choose the offset same as before, and so we can have it sort of down below whatever wherever we want it. So let's just put the drop shadow there. We can have a more radius so it blurs more. And again, we can choose the shadow color. We can colorize the image. Basically, what that does is changes the color of the uh, the object that we had in the starting position. So, if we want to change that color there, we can do that. Now, that drop shadow I think works a bit better because we don't have this little white sort of area in between the shadow and this bit here. Okay, so that noise industries drop shadow does work better and it's a free filter that comes with FX Factory. FX Factory is free so that's doing a few drop shadows using Pixelmator. I would like it if there was a similar sort of interface to the drop shadows for the text as there was for doing other bitmap objects. And that is all for drop shadows in Pixelmator and in the next one we'll have a look at drop shadows of shapes and we'll also compare Pixelmator with ArtText 2 and see how it could be good to have more than one application in your graphic toolbox. Bye bye now.